Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast, where it's all about real women, real stories, real inspiration. And now your host and creator of Moms Making Six Figures, Heidi Bartolotta. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for doing this. Of course. So I thought it would be nice to start out talking about your background in media, which is years and years and years and years, really. You came up in it. I grew up in it. Yeah. My yeah. whole life. So maybe talking about that and then how you transitioned into more of an entrepreneurial business. Okay. Um, you know, I, I grew up in the radio industry. My parents really believe that... Um, Kids who weren't busy were kids that got in trouble. <laughs> so if I wasn't on a sports field myself, I was working at the radio station, which was a fun thing to do because it was kind of the radio station that everybody listened to growing up anyway. But I spent my summers um, in, you know, in high school working in the promotions area where we do beach patrol and different things like that. And then I'd be on the request lines where people used to request their favorite songs. And so, um, I worked really in every department, including, you know, doing a few commercials. Um, so I really grew up in the business. So I, I, I felt like, um, you know, when I was out of college, I, I was pretty prepared to go to work and I knew what I was going to do. Um, so I dove in. I didn't want to stay here in San Diego. I wanted to make a name for myself. I didn't want to, you know, have everybody think that I was where I was because of my dad. Um, and so going to college at USC, I decided I wanted to stay in Los Angeles. I interviewed for all kinds of jobs, at, you know, a very busy radio market. Um, and a lot of the people challenged me. They said, well, why would we train you when we know you're eventually just going to leave? Mm -hmm. um, so I did end up getting a job. Um, and then I traveled a little bit, <laughs> um, went uh, backpacking and I was Australia and New Zealand, and I said, I'm never going back to Los Angeles. The world has so much more to offer. And so I came home, and I think I was home a week before my dad said, well, if you're not going to work for me here, pick a state, because he had businesses in, you know, about six or eight other states. So I went to Colorado, where um, that, that's a second home for us um, growing up, always has been, and went to work for him there, um, where I actually worked for my aunt. Um, and they were hard on me, you know. They didn't want anybody thinking that I was getting any special treatment, special favors. Um, so I was given the tools to work and you know, handed a yellow pages, if people even know what that is anymore. Um, that was my lead source. And I just started doing the work. And I kind of had a chip on my shoulder because I was treated a little bit different. You know, there were everybody looking over their shoulder, the boss, you know, owner's daughter. Um, so I had a lot to prove. And I think a lot of that comes just from competitive spirit of being raised in a house of athletes. And yeah. so <coughs> kind of just pursued, um, you know, really working hard and set out to make a name for myself. So let me ask you a question. So I think that, um, you have an insane work ethic and I've watched that in you, which obviously started when you were very young. And we have so many listeners that are aspiring to grow in their careers or in their businesses. And what would you say to someone that's maybe younger starting out where they are? What do you think one of, one of the things that um, really has helped you over the years. I know your work ethic is one of them, but what are some of the things maybe that have really helped you to excel in your careers? Because you've had different careers. Yes, many of them in media, but you've excelled in all of them. Yeah, I mean, I think you have to have a plan and a goal. You, you know, you can have dreams and dreams are great, but if you don't have, um, you know, a, a, a map to get you there, um, and something to really follow and, um, you know, a, a roadmap really, um, 
then you're not going to achieve those dreams. So it's great to dream, dream big, um, but I would say you've got to dig in and commit and really decide why you have those dreams and what you expect from them. Um, and then you have a plan in place to achieve them. And I like to break things down in more bite-sized pieces because there's sometimes the big dream seems a little bit overwhelming. Um, so if you break it down in just tinier chunks, 90-day increments, 60-day, um, you know, six months at a time. But I'm big on, you know, um, vision boards and dream boards and, you know, a plan. If you don't have a plan, it's really hard to get from A to Z. So mm -hmm. that's great advice. So one of the things I always ask you know this is, do you remember when you achieved six figures? It's funny. I was asking my husband. We've been together quite some time. You know, I was, I was 21 when I met him. So um, he was always the numbers guy. Um, I've gotten much better. But um, I don't know exactly when it was. I know I was, I know I was under 25. Um, so it was, you know, I hit the workforce. I was 21 when I went to work. Um, I want to say if it wasn't my second year in business, it was my third. So you didn't have an emotional tie to it. I think for you, the expectation of performing has always been you just perform. Because I know your family, right? So... It doesn't surprise me. I think a lot of people have a lot more emotion wrapped around it than you probably did. Yeah, for me, it wasn't the number. It was more of um, being accepted for being me and not the owner's daughter. Mm -hmm. I had something to prove. And it, it there wasn't a dollar figure associated. It was more of a respect level. So. Good point. Yeah. So over the years, you've run different pieces of business, you've, I mean, you really have done everything when it comes to business, specifically in media, but business really. What are, what are some of the lessons that you would convey to a younger you, right? We are, if you think about the demographic of our podcast listeners, it's women that are aspiring to six figures. Some of them are probably closer than others. And you mentioned having a goal and basically having a plan to get to that goal. What are some of the maybe internal attributes that you credit in yourself, but maybe even in those that you've mentored over the years? Because you've mentored a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, I, I think depending on whether you're in a corporate scenario or in a more entrepreneurial scenario, there's differences. Um, in a corporate setting, there's more structured hours. There's Everything's kind of structured for you. So if you're not somebody that can have that discipline on your own, corporate's probably the right environment for you. Um, for me, the biggest challenge in a transition was – having that structure because when I'm busy, I'm actually way more effective than I am when I have time on my hands. So I've always performed better when I have just way too much going on um, because you have to have that structure. Mm -hmm. And so what I would say to somebody who is kind of examining both sides of that would be um, if you're not busy, you know, create a calendar for yourself. You have to really own that calendar and plan things out, not so you're fitting them in in the day, but really scheduling them. Um, and I think that that was the biggest transition for me was that I had too much time on my hands. And when you have too much time on your hands, you find a lot of things that aren't really super important to get done. You know, there's always that closet that needs to be yeah. uh, reorganized or things you, you can find when you're working from home, um, which, you know, that was the first time I had done that after 20 years in media. Um, I had to create that structure that I was treating it like a business. Um, obviously it was a business, but I was owning my calendar and that's when I'm most effective. Yeah. One of the quotes that I love is when you own your calendar, you own your life. Yeah. 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 So podcast or book, is there one that you would recommend? Uh, you know, right now I'm having a lot of fun with both of those. Um, I, I love your new podcast. <laughs> Um, but I also have a good friend, um, Jim Rome, who we've known for years and years. And he actually launched about two weeks ago um, a project and a podcast called The Reinvention Pro Project. And I love it for people in my age group 
and his because he's just looking to make, you know, he's obviously had a lot of success in his life. Um, but he's looking for how can he make the next part of his life, you know, better than before. And so it really talks about that and, and um, his journey and, you know, people that fascinate him. And so um, I've only listened to a couple so far, but they're, they're really interesting and fun. And then um, I am reading a book called uh, Believe It from uh, Jamie uh, Lynn Kima. I, I'm probably butchering her name, but she um, she's amazing. She just um, launched a book about t- probably also two weeks ago, um, and she sold her company that she started from her living room to L'Oreal Cosmetics for $1.2 billion dollars. And it, she's just a real inspiration, and she brings in all kinds of um, phenomenal business people and inspirational people. So that has different parts of a podcast also mm-hmm. within the book with um, a lot of her own mentors. So Cool. What am I not asking you that you think would be great wisdom to put on a podcast? Um, you know, I mean, I haven't talked about kids. Um, raising kids and being a a busy mom. Um, I have been so grateful that I've had both careers, both the corporate and, you know, my own, my own business, um, because in, in the years that it's really counted for really impacting, um, my boy's future, I was present. Um, and I've always liked to say, I'm a work from home mom, not a stay at home mom. Mm -hmm. And God bless all the stay at home moms. They have the hardest jobs in the world, but my kids have always seen me work and they know, again, the work ethic. And that's something that was driven home, as we talked about, for me as a kid. Um, But it's been instilled in my boys. And I think that a lot of their success and, you know, going on to play college athletics has come from the examples at home. Mm -hmm. So, And also, I think what you started out with is setting a goal and breaking it down into bite-sized pieces, I really have watched you do that with your boys. So it applies to life just as much as it does to business. I mean, there's so much overlap always, right? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I I am not one that likes that everybody gets a trophy in sports. (laughs) Um, We, again, come from a pretty competitive family, but I think you have to fail in business and life and sports to grow. So if you're not putting yourself out there, if you're not falling down, um, you're not going to improve. And so that's always been what I preach to my boys is, you know, if you're not stretching yourself, you know, you're not going to be the best at everything when you're first starting. So just work through it and the hard work and your plan, it'll, it'll make you stronger. So one thing that I didn't ask you that I would love to have you talk about is, we're at a very interesting time right now, obviously, with just all of the changes because of COVID. And you have gone through some transitions that were literally forced on you that I think you went into kicking and screaming and came out the other side very happy that that happened. And I think it might be interesting for you to talk a little bit about your mental transition in that because there's probably a lot of people that right now could really relate where their industry is going away Mm -hmm. or maybe because of COVID went away completely or is not coming back in the same way that they had anticipated or expected, right? Um, And that shift that you went through in your career, I think you would say was a very positive thing, but maybe didn't feel like it at the time. Oh, absolutely. Um, So when I made my transition, it was 10 years ago, and it's probably in 2010, the closest that we are to where our economy is and the amount of people that had been laid off. And um, I found myself at that time really wanting to just reevaluate where I wanted to go. And I had opportunities to stay in media, immediately replace my income, probably even a little bit with an upside. And I... um, I just decided, no, I was done with that. I needed to really prioritize things. And yes, I needed that income, but I needed it on my terms and for my kids. Um, So that's what led me in the direction of, 
you know, uh, making a change, but I didn't think it was something that I would stay in. I thought, okay, I'm going to use this as a transitional time till I really figure out what I want to do. And, um, yeah, it was a little bit forced on me. However, it was a very, it ended up to be the best thing in the world. And, um, I, I wouldn't trade the last you know, almost 10 years that I've had this part of my life um, just to, to be a, a very present mom, to help other moms to do the same. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the, the mentorship sometimes is um, having fun and celebrating others is, is um, helping them achieve their goals. It's, it's you know, you know, it's, it feels better than your own achievements. Mm-hmm. Um and so what I would say is it's a scary time for a lot of people right now. And I think a lot of people have not come to grips that, yes, things are getting better, but I don't think they're ever going back to what they were. And so I think some people are going to probably need to take a really hard look at reality. And, you know, are events ever going to come back in the capacity that they were? I'm not sure too many people are going to want to be around thousands and thousands of people, regardless of if they're vaccinated. So I think it's going to take, if not forever, it's going to take some time Mm -hmm. until a lot of industries are going to be back on the ground Mm -hmm. and strong. And so I think that people need to be a little bit open to change um, because you never know what you're going to find there. And it it really can be a blessing. So I know. I think, you know, I look at, that I have, and you and I have talked a little bit about this, I have a really dear friend that probably six months into COVID said to me, I've never spent this much time with my children and I'm never going back. And I thought, wow, for something that seems like such a negative and has impacted, you know, so many people in a harsh way, what a blessing, really. Yeah. Yeah, somebody asked me um, actually just this past week, what lessons, you know, we're approaching tomorrow a year from the shutdown. So what lessons have you learned from this? And, you know, as a mom of kids that are about to fly the coop, one's out and one's about to go, um, I'm so grateful that we were able to be home and I was able to work from home. But the four of us... um, really for the very last time as a family unit living together. Yeah, I mean, we spent, we had more family dinners than we had ever had together. Um, More family dinners, we played games that we had never, things we had never done before. Um, So there's a lot of moments, although it was a horrible year for so many people, but a lot of things that I'll never forget and I wouldn't trade. So if you can kind of look at silver lining, yeah, I'm grateful for that time before my boys are really gone. So, yeah, men. Not yeah. Men. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Thank you for taking the time of to do course. this and sharing your wisdom. So, there's so many other things I could ask you. We could go on for hours and hours. You have so much wisdom from all of your. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. A lot of years. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please take a moment and leave a review on iTunes. To learn more about Moms Making Six Figures, head over to momsmakingsixfigures.com. That's right, momsmakingsixfigures.com.